Okay, the Smith & Wesson 351PD, that's the model that we're going to be looking at today. As you can see, it's a nice snub nose revolver. The MSRP on this is $759. You know, the Smith & Wesson is quite a bit more than some of the other uh, revolvers, but I think if you're looking to, to invest in something that's going to last you a long time, you're going to find that it's money well spent. So it's what they call the J-Frame, which is the, the, the same frame as they use for the 38 Special and a lot of other ones, which if you want different grips, these are great, nice little grips, but if you want different grips, they're very, very easy to get. The barrel, as in most of the snub nose, is 1.875 inches, which is 8 7 8 inches. The overall length is 6.19 inches. The nice thing on this revolver is the seven round capacity. You can see it's uh, fairly uh, slim, as most of these snub nose revolvers are. The weight on this is spectacular. It's 10.8 ounces. It's probably one of the lightest revolvers that I've ever felt. It's lighter than the Ruger LCR is actually. This is one that if I don't sell it, it's gonna end up in my pocket. Um, the nice, another nice thing, it's single double action, so it's got the hammer you can cock for single action, or you can pull the straight, trigger straight through for double action. The material on this is it's an aluminum alloy frame and cylinder, which is what really helps to keep the weight down. Another thing they added, which is really nice because it uh, would take some uh, extra investment in time in an aftermarket, is this nice high visibility sight. It's a fiber optic orange sight that comes with it. These came with these nice, really nice wood grips. Now, as you notice for, my, for me, I mean, I'm basically losing the pinky grip. If that's an issue for you with these J-frames, there's, there's dozens and dozens of aftermarket grips that are available. Hogue makes a very reasonably priced grip that extends down and picks up that pinky. For me, uh, it's a very easy uh, caliber and revolver to handle, so that didn't bother me that much. It's a pretty hefty round compared to a 22 long rifle. There'll be debate about that, and those are choices that you'll have to make for yourself on that uh, 22 Magnum. Some people say, you know, it's not suitable for self-defense, but again, those are your, your personal decisions that you make, uh, the, but it's definitely much different than a 22 long rifle. One recommendation I have is for those of you who, who are interested in training and working with new shooters, this is a nice way to introduce them to something that's got a little more recoil and a little more uh, power to it than a 22 long rifle. So it's a pretty easy graduation from shooting something like this, which most people find tolerable, to then maybe something in a light 38 Special. Uh, it's just going to give them a little bit better feeling for it than just a 22 long rifle. Uh, I love this uh, revolver. It's going to end up in my pocket, I can assure you of that. It's very light, very easy to carry. Uh, it shoots that 22 Magnum, so it's got some a uh, little bit of authority to it. Very easy to shoot. The, I did notice that that single action trigger pull is very, very light, so if you cock the if you cock it, it's it's a light enough trigger pull. You could have you could have a unintentional discharge on it. It's that light, uh, so you know make sure that you're cognizant of that when you're or when you're having somebody shoot it. But that double action is a nice strong double action. I noticed when I was shooting it today, uh, I was close to the target all the time, but I was a little off target, and it was just a matter of the sight picture. I had to get that dot below that fixed rear sight, which took uh, just took me a little a few shots to kind of realize what was going on. But as long as I've got that sight picture right, I was right on target consistently, even with that double action trigger pull. It's a couple hundred dollars more than you're going to find the Ruger LCR for, and it's quite a bit more than you'll find some of the other models for. But I think that you'll find that as money well spent. I've never been disappointed with a Smith & Wesson revolver and you won't be disappointed with this one either. We've got a typical Smith & Wesson um, cardboard box. The uh, six-digit Smith & Wesson product code on this is 160 
228, that's one that you'll find helpful. In the box, you basically have the revolver, manual, fired case, the lock, so that's about it, pretty straightforward.